So once you've chosen the image you want to actually paint, it's important to choose the right kind of brush. For something like this that's got really fine detail, you would only need the thinnest of brushes. If you wanted to get more of a stippled effect, um, then you could use something like this that is a much wider brush and don't put much water on the paintbrush and make sure the paint's almost quite dry and you'll see you can get a good stippling effect. If you wanted to paint something more like a watercolour flower, you could just use a rounded with a nice point on the end and um, you can make this quite watery so you can put quite a lot of water on the brush and some paint and then you can build up your image that you're wanting to create with different layering and you can see it gives you a really nice water watercolour effect um, and the same brush would give you this technique down here. For something like um, a grassy effect or a palm tree you could use um, a, again a th very thin flat brush just gently make the bristles stand slightly further apart so like that like that and again you don't need much paint and water and you will get a kind of feathered effect like so really good for things like palm tree and grass to get like a just a regular um, like wash effect if you get lots of paint and really put it on you can be nice and don't have to be frightened of that kind of paint just almost whack it all on and the colors will start to blend choose your different shades and you can see everything will blend in so something along that lines to get like a nice um, background effect if you want to get a really thick paint use um, a regular poster paint add some talcum powder or, or flour mix it in and you'll see it becomes really thick and gloopy like this and then when you put that on it will leave a really good texture it takes a long time to dry but it's a really good trick so as you can see there's quite a few different brushes to use um, have a go with different brushes and see the different effects that they will give um, because they really do vary and um, if you use sometimes the brushes sideways on as well you can get um, short dabs you can get long sleek strokes you can um, apply the paint in layers um, you could even mix it with a bit of sand um, and different materials that I've suggested and see how that works as well. So if you don't like working with paints, either watercolour or um, a thicker base paint, then you can always use pastels. Um, I've just done some pastel work here just to show you how it blends nicely. Get your different shades and um, and then with your finger all you need to do is really, you have to do it quite hard, rub the colours and they will blend. Um, but they're quite tricky to use on a small area with fine detail. Obviously you can use something like charcoal. Um, I like the effect of charcoal, I think it's really nice. Um, let's see if we can just give a vague outline of something here. So, um, you could very gently, you can use this to get some kind of, try to do some kind of third here. Get quite nice effects coming through with charcoal. I actually think it's quite nice to work with, um, but some people find it really tricky. Um, the good thing with charcoal though is you can rub it out. So once you've got your outline um, and you can build on it so it's quite an easy way to work um, with charcoal and you can blend it nicely so if you want to get something that's 
a little bit more faded you can just gently rub it that's a really quick um, bird it was supposed to be a kingfisher but I kind of think it looks more like a penguin but there we go so a very quick idea for you but you can use um, the charcoal really lightly um, another tip is to just rip some paper as well if you wanted to make some kind of mountain scene just rip the paper any old way um, and then use some charcoal and you end up with um, a mountain scene in the background which is quite a nice idea so that's all you do just take the paper rip it gen in any old way really and you'll end up with some kind of scene in the background and then you can combine it with just using um, a watercolour um, paintbrush um, the only other thing to do is get some texture with something like regular bubble wrap put the paint in the bubble wrap and you will end up with a nice stipple effect, which can be really, really cool if you're wanting to do um, trees in the background, or you can just use a regular sponge. And again, you will get nice effects. And So for a sketch, I've um, very quickly drawn out a turtle, um, just a rough outline, just to give you an idea. And then um, I've just used um, a 2B pencil, and um, I always hold the pencil slightly on its side when I sketch, because I just find it easier to do. And the best thing to do is to use the hatching method, method, which is what we've done before, where you just go back and forth like that. Um, you can do the cross hatching, um, which I don't know if you can remember, where you then do it the, the, the opposite direction, so you get a really good effect if you do that. However, for something like this, you would probably just do the hatching method, um, put your pencil slightly on the side, and just very gently, almost like you're colouring in, shading, go right to the edges, and you get a nice texture. Um, to do anything around something quite um, prominent like the eye, you would just use the very, very tip of the pencil um, and just get some darker shading in. And on the underside, you would do darker shading as well. So you can obviously have a play around with shading. It's a nice, quite a relaxing way of doing drawings and things. Um, there's also the other ways you can do it. So you can do the um, stippling, which we've done before, where it's just lots and lots and lots of dots. It can be really effective. Um, and you can also do almost like the, the scribble, where you go back and forth. It's quite good on something where you want to get um, effect, like on a teddy bear or something like that, um, or some kind of fur. So you can see the different effects you can get with the pencils. So have a go at that. Um, and that will be the basis of my theme because I wanted to do something with um, pollution in the ocean. And the one thing I know that um, suffers is the, is the, um, the sea turtle. So here we can see that I've started to make my collage. I've used different pieces of tissue paper, different shades of blues and greens and, and greys, and um, some wallpaper, um, some wool, sequins and buttons, and a ring pull for the turtle's eye. So all you do is cut all your pieces of material up and um, draw your outline. And once you've got that, you can start to layer up all the different materials you've you've chosen. Um, I will probably end up wrapping some kind of plastic wrapping around the turtle's head and, and body area. So it gets my point across about what plastic does to the animals in the, in the ocean. Ironically, I'm going to be using plastic on the actual collage. So when you have finished, make sure um, 
once you've completed everything that it's recycled in the appropriate way so that we obviously carry that point and message across and helping the environment. Um, it is quite time consuming but it is quite therapeutic at the same time and um, it feels like you're not getting anywhere for a long time but persevere because all of a sudden your picture really starts to stand up. Good luck.